if you had this kind of experience like working on a complex model with a lot of closed surface together and you have so many issues during the texturing especially when you want to use something like pass tool or paint along the pass inside Subplans Painter you're in the right place I'm going to explain you and show you how to use a simple technique to avoid this kind of problems I'm Mehdi from 2D Redbox channel and before jumping into the video let me introduce you the brand new course that we release for Substance Painter. Learning Substance Painter is easier than ever. Hey all Substance lovers, texture seekers and awesome future artists. Welcome to ultimate course for learning Substance Painter from zero to hero. Ready to learn how to texture with different projects? Substance Master released a brand new course for those who want to learn to texture with Substance Painter. In this course, we cover from preparing the model to rendering different projects, different challenges. If you want to level up your skill in texturing, come and check the Substance Master Ultimate course for learning Substance Painter. Okay, at the first step, we need to load the 3D model inside Substance Painter. I just click and drag the model and after importing the model inside Substance Painter the first thing is going to the shader setting and turn on double sided to avoid back face or thin surface inside the viewport okay so the next step is baking mesh maps so I'm going to the baking section and in here I just change the output size to 4k turn on the bench normal change the anti-aliasing to 64 and start the baking process okay after baking mesh maps it's time to focus on the texturing part uh, I'm going to create a simple material for the accessory so let's go here select the accessory texture set and in the library I'm going to use the bronze armor so let's go to the library and yeah we have the bronze armor on the metal section and that's it so let's go for the belt itself and let's go here in this texture set for the belt section I just create a smart material for the leather part and I'm going to use that but you can get it for free with the link in the description so don't hesitate to go to the website get it for free and use it in your project and in here I'm going to load the smart material for the belt with drag and drop the file that already you downloaded from the website and boom this is the result and for the first step I'm going to increase the texture size to 2k in the viewport okay now we have a leather material on belt let's check what we have under the hood okay so let's open the folder and we have so many layers for adding details you need to work on the add your stitch here add your seams here or add your trim height or pattern or just if you want to add something else you need to add it before data collection and after that the old material is going to update with your details okay and whenever you see red label layer you can understand okay in this area I can change color or something like that and all the layers have name so you can find whatever you want and tweak it to reach your result that you want okay so let's go and see what's happening if I go here in the add your stitches go to the pass tool okay and now I have top stitching on the pass tool and I can go here and add stitches but the big problem that we have here is the model is uh, kind of complex we have so many closed surface together so it's kind of hard to add stitches for example here like this and this and we have some effect 
on the other part okay and whenever i want to change it or modify it you know it's going to detect the other object other surface and the pass to totally break so what is the solution for this kind of problem and i'm going to show you the simple one we have so many different technique for this part but this is the simplest and easiest way to solve this issue but remember that you need to do and apply this technique after baking the mesh maps so what is the solution i'm going to the 3d modeling software i'm using 3ds max you can use blender or maya or etc and after that i'm going to modify the mesh and coming back to the substance painter but the most important thing here is you should or it's better to do and apply this technique on the project after baking all the mesh maps okay so let's do that and see the result okay let's do this inside the 3ds max okay now we are in the 3ds max and for the first step let's create a duplicate of the model i'm going to name it build explode okay uh, now let's talk about how to solve the problem the problem is the model when it's complex it means we have so many small parts small sections and close surface together okay so in the explode version we need to we need to separate all the small pieces how to do that I'm going to do it uh, under one mesh you can detach all the part and separate it uh, in the sheet so you can do whatever you want uh, the main concept is the same and let's do that okay I'm going to select these parts okay bring it up that's great okay I'm going to separate these meshes too like this and I'm going to pause the video and rearrange all the pieces and after that we are going back to Substance Painter and we can find what's happening over there okay let's do that okay now we are done here I just create the explode version of the belt and we need to export all the matters together again without touching anything inside the 3ds max or your 3d model it means you cannot rename your material or maybe repack your uv or something like that everything should be same we just modify the space between the models okay so let's export again this file and re-import it inside substance painter okay now we are in substance painter and we just want to re-import the mesh so we can go to the edit and re-import mesh if we just override the fx file and if we export and create another fx file here for the explode version we can go to the project configuration and we can change the model in here we just need to select the fx file with the explode version in it okay so let's re-import a mesh and as you can see i have the explode version here and now we can see the effect of the ambient occlusion on the surface and if it's going to bother you you can go here in the texture set list be sure you are in the right texture set and after that go to the texture set setting and just remove the ambient occlusion by removing ambient occlusion from your texture set setting all the generators and the filters related to the ambient occlusion or just using ambient occlusion they are going to be break but after adding all the details you can revert this remove and just select ambient occlusion here again and everything goes well okay so uh now we are here and we have extra mesh with the explode version and we can go to the add your stitches here and add your detail here 
very fast, very easy, without any conflict with another surface, and you can control it very well. Okay, like this. And whenever you come back here on the model, the original one, you can see everything goes smoothly. So I'm going to pause the video, adding all the details on the surface, and come back again and check the final result. Okay, now we are done, and as you can see, the texturing is super clean because we use the explode method here. And that's it. With this simple trick and simple action, you can improve your workflow inside Substance Painter when you are facing with a complex one. I hope you like this video, learn something new here, and if you like it, please hit the like button. You can subscribe our channel, ring the bell to be noticed about the newest video on this channel. Please read the description, all the details are over there. Thank you for watching this video, be creative, bye.